And this is Joe White. And this is Joe Radishell. And we are Geek Chic with Joe and Joe in the evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, it was my birthday two days ago. So Oh, happy late I birthday. I am <laughs> 39 birthday. years old. I'm not getting any younger, and I'm starting to get back aches. I don't <laughs> back like aches? Back aches. I don't like that. I don't like back aches. Okay. No to back aches. No back aches. Okay. Um, um, uh, we're going to talk about anime tonight. Anime. 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 Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're presenting to you. Anime. Anime. <laughs> okay. Um, we got two shows that we want to talk about because uh, I just saw them last night. Oh, well, I just finished you know, one season of Ruby, and uh, I just binged watch Tokyo Ghoul, and uh, can't wait to review Tokyo Ghoul. But before we do so, I want to talk about uh, a few news, uh, geek news you can use. I got um, some geek news, too, but yep. we'll do that after you. Okay. Boom, so, dropping bars. Boom, check a block out. Okay. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. What are we going to do with you? Um, put it in a tube. Put it in a tube. Hey. Well, the problem with the YouTube that we're having now is that, unfortunately, um, they are implementing their new monetization policy and everybody's getting pissed about it. Why? Because... That screws over like 99.9% of all YouTubers. Right. Well, they're trying to... Um Try to cancel out you know, the prank channels and whatnot. Okay, that's understanding. Those are annoying. Yeah, they're annoying, but... Um... It, it is spreading to the the popular YouTubers like Philip DeFranco PewDiePie. and huh PewDiePie. PewDiePie, um, PewDiePie uh, he- has his own social media problem to to to, to fend off because now he's his Twitter account was canceled. What? Not Twitter. Yeah, his Twitter account was temporarily suspended for about a few hours because he made up uh, made this like made oh, the plane, ISIS tweet. The ISIS tweet with Jack Septicai. Um, <laughs> Those guys need to chill the hell out. <laughs> well, they suspended his uh, Twitter account for a few hours, and then he finally got it back. And um, but he lost his verified status. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not even verified. We're not even verified yet. My my, I, I sent him my application to Twitter, and Twitter said eh, you can't have a you can't have a validation. Why? Because uh, we're not eligible for it. Hmm. But, we're not popular enough. Uh, well, we're public figures. We're on the the radio. That's true. But oh well. Seriously, I get texts like, so I get I'm connected to my Xbox through my phone, right? And so, some of the listeners are friends of mine from, like my Xbox days, like when the 360 was a big nice. thing. And I have a friend that I haven't talked to in forever. Like, I haven't seen him or heard from him in a couple years. And he messaged me out of the blue and was like, dude, that was a great show. It was awesome. I loved it. And I was like, nice. what awesome. the hell have you been doing? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I, I there's, there's so many v- videos now on YouTube uh, because they're now implementing their, their monetization policy. You can't uh, have any violence. You can't have any excessive swearing. You can't have any... Um, Controversial topics on YouTube. Just for that, the way I'm going to um, protest is I'm going to put up a very violent video of me playing Battlefield while swearing constantly. Okay, go ahead. And they're not going to monetize it though. Um, uh, Philip DeFranco uh, posted a, a, a video saying that a lot of his uh, videos got unmonetized. Even me talking about this. Explain what that means. Mon- unmonetized. Okay, monetization on your account. Once you become a part YouTube partner, you can monetize your videos, and you can have insert advertisements on them. So, like, you let's say you have like a three-hour-long video, like every forty-five minutes is an ad or something like that. Yeah. Okay, I see yeah, what you're yeah. saying. Um, I'll show it to you on my YouTube channel. Did they monetize one of our unmonetize one of ours or whatever? No, uh, not, <laughs> not yet. We're not even close to partners. <laughs> um, no, I am a YouTube partner. You are? Yes, I am. What? Uh, I'll show it to you. How? Don't you have to have like so many subscribers? I have five hundred seventy-seven subscri- subscribers on my channel. I don't even think I have one. 
Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but then okay. again, I have like three different channels. So, so this is your, uh, we're going to go to your video manager. Yeah. Um, if it'll load. If it'll load. Okay. So here is um, the, uh, lo- the, uh, the icon that says it's monetized. It'll show green with the, uh, the dollar amount in the middle. Okay. So if it does not, uh, if it's not monetized, it'll show you the reason why. So for example, one of my Castlevania videos, I did a let's play. Uh, you've it'll been doing be let's bl- plays? Yes. Nice. Um, That's right, you have PlayStation. Okay, so it will say includes copyright content, and there's a copyright claim. Like a lot of the uh, the, the archives well, I posted. was copyrighted? The game? Uh, the music inside the game. Konami uh, made a claim against it. Um, I could remove the music. Um, but that's a pain. That is not just a pain. It's not really that much of a pain. You can do it within, uh, within the YouTube app. Um, but uh, it'll take some time. So, for example, if I uh, for one of the archives here, I just have to upload it to YouTube. Right. Make it private. Yeah. And then once the copyright claims start coming in on, like, say, let's say Katy Perry's, Katy Perry posted a copyright claim on my video then we just then gotta remove i would that have to music. just have to remove the song from the video all right yeah it, it's not a big deal though um this is it just requires a little bit of editing on my part um but if it'll uh, it'll show that the uh if it's not monetized it'll have like a uh a, a, a yellow um monetization instead of a green so that's you know um irritation to YouTubers. irritating yes because you, that's their for a lot of youtubers that's their only primary source of income um yeah um referring to income uh just to remind everybody i have a patreon account Patreon. Patreon. So, if you guys are want to support the show and keep the show running, uh, just go on Patreon.com. Look up Geek Chic. Uh, we are there. You can donate a few dollars here and there, and that will help the show out immensely. Okay. Do you want to uh, go on to what you want to talk about? I do. Yes. I, do. I really do. Yes. So... Okay. Last weekend for Titanfall 2, they released a new map and a new set of weapons and a whole bunch of new abilities for your pilots. Okay. I'm sticking with the crap I was using the first weekend. Right. But these new maps are pretty good. Um, the Battlefield 1 open beta began this week. Like, as in, when I say this week, I mean, like, two days ago. <gasps> okay. And I have been playing it ever since. Cool. Uh, it's pretty good like it's huge maps there's one map where like if you have to if you play capture the flag one of the flags you have to capture is like in the middle of nowhere on the other side of the map and it takes forever for both teams to get to it okay uh that same map has a train that goes through all of the flags Uh and it's just got machine guns all over it guys i'm going to tell you now you cannot kill the horses which is really disappointing because 90% 90% of the victories are from the dudes on horses on the other team. Dang. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. Like, I went up to a dude on a horse. He was on a horse, and I had a tank, and, like, I just couldn't kill the horse. I got him, though, so. Hmm. Aim for the head. Hmm. Oh, video game. Um, no Man's Sky. Have I heard you- a lot of crap about that. Oh. Like, there's a lot of refunds. A lot of refunds, 90% drop within a week after playing No Man's Sky. Um, I, my neighbor and I were talking about this one, um, and there was a video that was done by, um, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, he's a really, really popular, he, he's he's like a, a he's grunge a big, dude. He's a big name. He's a big name YouTuber, but he's not PewDiePie. I'm talking about he's he's like a heavy metal kind of dude. He's he wears long hair, and he has like a beard, a, like a Nordic fish. beard and stuff. No, yeah. no, I don't know who you're talking about. Um, uh, I, I I can see his face, but I can't. It's his name was on the tip of my tongue. Um, but a 90% drop of No Man's Sky. Um, I think it was like down to like 15 million users now. 
Well, just a huge the game, drop. The game is glitching like crazy. Well, it's not just glitching. Um, the it seems like it's like a rehash of Destiny. It was not a finished game. Um, a lot of the the galaxies and universes that you can go to are just well, basically rehashes <laughs> of the other ones. <laughs> well, what I heard is that when you try to like go meet up with friends in the game, right. you can't see them. I actually saw something really funny about this on Twitter. Uh, it's like these guys, they went and got No Man's Sky because his buddy works at GameStop. He got a killer deal on it. And so he's like, man, this game sucks. I'm coming to return it. And so he walks in and he goes, where are you? Oh, I'm standing behind the counter. Dude, I'm right there. You're not there. I don't see you. Where are you? Quit joking. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm right behind the counter. And so like they just put a bunch of pictures and there's all this text like, come on, man, quit having joking. Where are you? And I'm like... Yeah, this is accurate. This is very accurate from what I've heard. (laughs) I haven't gotten the chance to play it, but it seems really funny. Uh, I also heard that it's like deleting, like just completely wiping discoveries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's some really freaky looking things that people have found, and it's funny. Like uh, mutations. No, not Donald Trump. Donald Trump won't be on it, but I don't know. No Man's Sky has been said to be infinite. Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk about Tokyo Ghoul? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's eat some flesh. I mean, uh, <laughs> save the world. Yeah. <laughs> save the world. <laughs> Let's change the, change the background music to Tokyo Ghoul, shall we? Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul. That's actually a very uh, accurate description of how much murder is going on. Interns, fire it up, interns. Okay, I got the word to our interns. Ugh. <sighs> Do we do we have interns? Uh, where, what happened to Mike? Mike, oh Mike Connor? Yeah, the intern. The intern. The oldest intern alive. Mm-hmm. In existence. He's, he's still. He's still in the getting through his uh, his medical rehab. issues. Yep. Okay. He's uh, still at JB. I think so. Yeah. He's, wow. I know. He's been there a while. He sure has. Yeah. I hope but once, Ghoul doesn't eat him. Once he's out, the first place he's going to come, or the first three, pl- one of the first three will be here. I guarantee it. I bet you one oh, of them's a bar. Maybe. Okay, G- Tokyo Ghoul time. I gave you this reference too. This is what's funny. What? And that I like, it's like yeah, we you should check this out. And you're like, well, you should watch Stranger Things, and I did, but not as much as I should have because Battlefield. Right. <laughs> Um, so, um, if you guys have not seen this anime or read the manga, Tokyo Ghoul is a, a series of horror anime. Um, would I call it horror? I would call it more of a thriller. Because yeah. it's not like, oh, I'm going to come in there and murder you while the lights are off. Well, it's more of a, this dude's trying to figure out who he is for Right. Okay. So we have this the main protagonist called Ken Kaneki. Kaneki. Um, Kaneki. Kaneki Ken. Kaneki Ken. Oh, it says right here Ken Kaneki. It's on the wiki page. Dude, it's a wiki page. Okay. Never mind. Kaneki <laughs> Ken. Kaneki. Kaneki. Okay. Kaneki. Okay. So Kaneki. at the start of the uh, series, he's going to school uh, with Hyde. Hide. Hide. I'm going to call him Hyde. Because he's hiding. Hiding. And no one knows what happens to him. Um, so, well, you know, he's always hiding. And then he's, like, running uh, up, kind of like a bunny to Kaneki, trying to surprise him. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Accurate description. Okay, so, at the start, the first episode, Kaneki, um... Uh, meets uh, up with whoa, this. Whoa, whoa. Before we get started, let's explain what a ghoul is. A ghoul is a flesh-eating thing. A, well, a ghoul is kind of like a, a zombie, and that it's, that it's alive. Well, it, it's kind of comparison with uh, vampirism, in my opinion, because... Cannibalism vampir- or? Oh, yeah, vampirism. I said cannibalism. Vampirism. Zombieism. Yeah, it's kind of like in between a zombie it eats people. and a vampire. Oh, they, they eat people, yes. Well, it's different because it doesn't infect people, so. 
Oh, it doesn't infect people. So unless you, you like get blood, their blood in you somehow. So you can't be uh, become a ghoul from a bite. No, because you die. Okay, that doesn't make sense because okay, uh, when so, during the story, Kaneki uh, goes to a cafe and meet, sees this uh, girl named Rice Riza. Riza. <laughs> I'm going to I have seen okay. These so names. I have seen a lot of anime. Like I did jujitsu, you learn Japanese a little bit there, and so you just learn how you just learn pronunciations after a while. And some people get too into it, weebs. Raze Kanishiru. You just butchered the hell out of that whole <laughs> thing. Can I just call her rice? Sure, rice. <laughs> right, Uncle Rize. Ben. Uncle Ben's <laughs> rice, people. I can cook it in 59 <laughs> seconds. Come at me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rize um, is a girl with purple hair and, you know, a nice rack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Kaneki get, uh, falls madly in love with her and they start, you know, I guess dating. They go on one date. They go on one date. And, <laughs> and then she tries to kill him. <laughs> and then she turns out to be a ghoul. And tries to and eat him. And tries to eat him. So another uh, incident happens where, uh, uh, like, a. Uh, uh, they were uh, near a construction site, and uh, uh, she throws him through the to the construction site, and like someone drops guess, uh, dropped like a bunch of really heavy steel pillars on them yeah, both. Uh, uh, on the both. Well, she it's she dies. Her. She dies. But he got really badly he, hurt. He got really badly hurt. And, and so the they take some of her like internal organs and swap them out with some of his, and boom, he's part ghoul. Well. Oh, well, that's the gist of it. But he um, he got so injured that they he, they he had to have an organ transplant, and that was so the they, closest thing right there. Yeah, so they took her organs and transplanted into him, and he becomes a half ghoul, half human, half ghoul. Um, and but a he ghoul, has to act more ghoulish than a normal half ghoul would because he's he's part ghoul now, so he can't eat human foods. I actually have a theory behind that, and that's a really crazy theory. It's because, well, what what's what's the most common thing in all foods that humans eat? Protein. They're all processed. Protein. Besides, no, they're all processed. Like they go through some sort of plant to get cleaned, or pet treated, or something like that. Well, why not just try and take a bite out of a cow? Good idea. Like no. There's just no thought behind it. Like, yeah, dude, just eat the cow. But no, they have to eat dead bodies. Or living. Yeah. Um, so the characteristics of a ghoul, um, they have a uh, an organ that comes out of their back called a... Uh, Kagane. Was, Kagane. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, different ghouls have different Kaganes. Yes. So, uh, Kaneke has, like, uh, it's kind of like a squid kind of... Kane, I, I like to imagine Kaneke. it as he has tails. I, I, I thought it was like a squid. I compare it to Naruto sometimes. I'm like, yeah, he he's Son Goku, the fourth... He's Roshi, mm-hmm. the son, the uh, four-tailed in Jinjuriki. Right. Oh. Some, oh. Your Something. mic. My mic is... Oh, your mic just gypped, dude. Look at that. People have been messing with it so much, it just kind of decided to... I'm sorry, guys. Here, let me... Uh, so, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna screw this in. I'm, I'm so screwed. Do we screw you while you talk? Yes, Whoa. I love being screwed. <laughs> okay. I don't need sex. The government screws me every day. My student loans screw me every day. Student loans screw everybody. But not as much as a ghoul. Here, we'll, we'll share a mic. That's not gonna work. No, that's not gonna work. Jeez, Darren, what did you do this morning? Yeah, Ruined all better. the mics. Okay, thank you. It got crazy this morning. Sorry. It got crazy, crazy. Stop drinking on your show. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Um. So where were we at? Um. Uh, at this point, uh, Kanake is a ghoul, and he's got a. Um, 
an organ that basically attacks other people, and other ghouls or have this you know, similar, similar but different kind of gaze. Yeah, your favorite was the gourmet. My favorite was no, that, my, no actually that, that's, that's his not ghoul, my, that's, that's his like his code name or whatever. The gourmet, the dude that like the tries to eat him the whole time. He reminded me of Frankenfurter. Dr. Frank Frankenfurter from uh, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> he might as well just, you know, because he was so flamboyant. <laughs> he's but just he's so not strange. My, he's not my favorite character, though. <laughs> really? Because you changed your profile picture to him? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, my actual... And my, my favorite character from this show is uh, Banjo. Which one is Banjo? That? Point, just point them out on my right, right over here this one. Oh, that guy yeah that guy I like the mask designer he's got a lot of cool piercings and stuff yeah he does um that the mask designer would be I'm trying to find him he's not on the list uh no Uda that's his name Uda um so basically um the the reason behind masks is that ghouls look like humans uh, talk like humans walk like humans except you know when they need to feed so then their eyes change they turn black and red and then they want to eat your face and there's a whole organization that is trying to hunt them down called the CCG and to hide themselves from the CCG they wear masks what, and that's only when they're going out to feed though that's only when they're going out to feed feed um, or fighting the CCG, I guess. Yeah. I like uh, Kaneke's mask. I thought that was pretty cool. I, yeah, I like that one. Because they call him... Uh, you saw season two, right? Yes. They call him Eye Patch. They call him Eye Patch, yes. Because he only has one ghoul eye. Yeah. And so during the day, when he's like walking around like a human, he wears an eye patch. Right. On the ghoul eye. Uh-huh. Um... So we have a, uh, again a whole or- entire organization that's wanting to hunt these people down. There's actually three organizations within the whole thing, though. Yeah, uh, but they're I guess they're internal ghoul organizations. Uh, no, there's the two. There's the one ghoul organization that wants to kill all the CCG people. Right. And then there's the one that's trying to live secretly in harmony with the humans. Right. So the one trying to kill everyone is uh, Eogiri Tree, and right. then. The it's actually a little coffee shop called Entaiku is the Entaiku. secret is the secret uh peaceful organization. So to quell their uh, a ghoul's uh thirst, uh I'm gonna call it thirst because you know um ghouls remind me uh in this this series reminds me of vampires. Because have you have you read Anne Rice's uh interview with a vampire and I saw the movie. You saw the movie? You need They're to remaking the it books. You need to read the books. Um books. So um, I can't. I'm busy being a Jedi. Prince Lestat, um, and yeah. the rest of the gang. They like to hang out in coffee shops and drink coffee. So that's that. Uh, that's kind of the, one of the characteristics that reminded me of uh, vampirism. Because you know sometimes the vampires like to have like the warmth of the coffee. Um, because they don't have heartbeats. But uh, coffee, uh, for these uh, ghouls, they like that because it quells their uh, thirst for flesh and blood. Oh, no, not flesh and blood. Um, what was that uh, little packets that uh, the uh, the coffee shop owner was giving out? Like the little cubes that would, that would quell the hunger. I think it was like some sort of... Like, did they put it in their coffee? I can't remember. It's yeah, been it was, it was, I think it was like a little, coffee. like a little type of blood cube or whatever. Uh, like a little substitute to tide them over for the time being. Oh, okay. Um, what did you think at the end of season one? Season one, man. Like, I think that was way. No, that's not true. The end of season one was pretty good. I thought the final episode, though, was fairly disturbing. Uh, yeah, that was disturbing. Um, so just to let you know, this show is not for kids. Blood, guts, and no, there's nothing. There's no sex in it. There's, there's no sex. There's in a it. lot of death. Death. 
Yeah, there's death there's a lot of death and just, uh, and, and blood. If you're very uh, squeamish towards blood, I don't recommend watching this uh, because there's, there's just blood everywhere. Oh um, my god. So at the end of season one, Kaneke gets kidnapped by this. Uh, they Yaku- call him the Jason. The Jason. Yakiomo Uomori. Uomori? Uomori. Um, so they psycho. call him Jason. Um, he was tortured. He was caught by, by the CCG. And they, yeah, they tortured so him. So they have like a ranking system. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. I think Jason is an SS. Uh, Kanaki Ken is an S class ghoul, and like, if you're in the S, that means you're highly dangerous. But the uh, owner of Antaiku is a triple S ghoul, right? And he's the strongest ghoul, was the strongest ghoul in existence, right? Uh huh. Um. So, uh, the Jason uh, managed to capture Kanaki and After pulverizing him, dude. Uh-huh. Little bloody pulp. Yeah, and tortured him. By cutting off his toes and fingers constantly, because they yep. kept growing back. They keep growing back. What was the method of torture? He No, it wasn't that. It was how, how he kept them sane that really bothered me. Um, it was 1,000 minus 7. 1,000 minus 7. He they, they t- they told Kaneki to count by minus 7. And then, like, during the narration, he's like, yeah, I realized that this was what kept me sane the whole time. Mm-hmm. I suck at math. I would not have been able to do that. No. I would have been like, uh, 985? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not even sure if that's right. And I tried on that one. It would be 993. And then minus 7. That's what I was going from was 93. Because everyone knows what 1,000 minus 7 is. And then take 3 and then minus 4. So it will be 986. I was, no, I was actually not that wrong. It was one off. And then take that minus seven, nine hundred seventy-seven. Okay, it seems like you'd be better at getting tortured. <laughs> and then nine hundred seventy. Okay, yep. So I found my test subjects. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I would have to be a ghoul first because I would die instantly if you cut off my toes. I'm very squeamish to pain. I would cry like a baby. But not if they grow back. But I, you would have to. I would well, have that's to be true. A he still first. felt. He still felt pain. He still fe- felt pain. But I was like figuring, out, trying to figure out what was that wrench that was he kept holding. I'm like, no, that's that's I actually like a bone remover claw thing. No, it was a dental tool that it he had modified to like oh, turn God. into like a dangerous, freaky weapon. And um, the gourmet. Um, that dude that, was that, psycho. That dude was psycho. He was like... There's a lot of parodies took, of that scene where he takes that uh, rag that has Kaneki's blood, blood on it. And, and there's he was a like lot of, sniffing it inside there's a lot the of par- bathroom. There's a lot of parodies behind that. Uh, this dude named Manslayer on YouTube uh-huh. does this thing called Gamer Poop where he just makes fun of a bunch of video games. He mods yeah. them so he can make funny videos. And on one of them... Uh, he takes Skyrim, and there's that dude that's always preaching in White Run, uh-huh, and he goes, yeah. "I I love moist towelettes. <laughs> they feel so wondrous upon my sweet ass." And you're like, "What?" And then they take that scene from Tokyo Ghoul and cover it over with that line. Uh-huh. So he's sniffing it and he's saying that, and you're like, "This is not okay." No, that's just that, um. But what was his whole entire... I, I just didn't understand the motivation before, behind him. Him also, uh, the gourmet kidnapped Kaneki in the middle of the first season. Well, remember, Kaneki smells ghoul, but he also smells human. Because he's not a full ghoul. Right. So, plus, uh, Riza was the most desired ghoul. And was a female at that. Mm-hmm. So, there's probably some sort of pheromone coming off from that. And I guess that would just make him tastier. I don't know. Like, ghouls are weird, man. Yeah. And what was up with Tuka? Toka? Yeah, Toka. Toucan? Tuka. Toucan. Toka. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, she had abandonment issues, dude. Her dad and mom died, and then her brother tried to kill her. Oh. I didn't remember that. It was like this. It was the final episode of season one. Oh, 
her brother tried to kill her. Oh yeah, her brother. Her brother's a douche. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I can see his picture on there too. Yeah, freaking turd. Ayato. Yeah, he's a turd. He is a a meanie. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> and Meanie. Yoshimura. Meanie. Which one Yoshimura. Is, point that one out. The, the old guy. The, the, oh. the guy that uh, around Eteku. The owl. The owl. The story behind him is actually really interesting. He's what they called a kakaju. A, a what? A kakaju. Kazuntite? It's a ghoul that has eaten other ghouls and gained their abilities in return. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Kan- Kaneki Ken is one of those. Kaneki, yeah. Be, tried to become ate, one of those. He because ate he, Jason. He ate Jason. Uh, yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah, to survive, he ate Jason. Hmm. It's like, I will eat you. I want to eat you. <sighs> I want to eat Gulp. you. For, don't forget the centipede. Oh, yeah, the centipede that he, uh, he was hiding under his in his ear. No, the one that Jason torture. put in his ear. The Jason put in his ear for torture. That was just weird. And then she he got visions of... Rize, yeah. At the end, she helped keep him. Like she helped him find the power and reality of what it is to be a ghoul. Right. And then Kaneki's hair turned from black to white, and he got goth fingernail polish and ta- toenail polish. There was something about that. It was like a Marie a Marie Antoinette thing. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. It was uh some. Yeah, the sudden the Marie Antoinette syndrome is a sudden whitening of the hair, and if you look up images, Tokyo Ghoul, that's the first thing you see. The the Marie Antoinette syndrome. Yes, because um, the okay the sudden whitening of Kaneki's hair caused by torture is a condition known as Marie Antoinette syndrome. This is a sudden whitening of the hair caused by extreme stress or emotional trauma, and is named after the last queen of France whose hair turned white during the imprisonment prior to her execution. Oh, wow. I thought it was just uh, him uh, tr- uh, actually... Turning into a ghoul. Turning in- into uh, Lewis's powers as a ghoul. I, I-, I don't know. I- it could be. I don't know. Weird. Um, I- that just makes me wonder about that because, you know, do presidents have Marie Antoinette Syndrome? Because they're under a high lot of um, sweat. Uh, a sweat. No, it's the sudden sweat whitening of hair. Stress. Some of that is just them being old farts. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> there's uh, a, there's a lot. They're all old farts when they get out of office. Or die. Um. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The only one that I don't think was an old fart completely was Lincoln. JFK. Well, that's true too. Yeah. That's a different story. Yeah, that's a different story. Okay. Um, so we get out of season one and we go into season two. Uh, season two continues uh, with uh, um, the fight between the CCG and the ghouls. It actually finishes it. Yes. And the start of it does. And then nearing the end. And then we find out more details about the owl. And there's two owls. There's not just one, there's two. It's his son. I thought he had a daughter. He had a son. He had a son? The uh, original owl had a son, and he left him to go avenge his wife. But when he came back, the baby was gone. And so that owl, this is a theory because I haven't read the manga. Uh I'm pretty sure that owl ended up being that dragon thing that ate the owl at the end of season two. So basically his son ate his dad. Well he was also like he didn't like fully eat the body. I think he was like holding it there to like go give him a burial or some stuff. I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. But I mean he just went gulp 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 right down to his stomach. I mean Maybe that his was, stomach's that, got that little, like, That pocket. was another disturbing, one of the most disturbing points of the whole entire uh, show was watching him, the, the that ghoul, eat. The owl? The owl. That was just... Whoa! Um, 
the other disturbing character of this whole entire uh, show was Juzu. Oh, Juzu. Yeah, that guy's awesome. I loved that character. He's so crazy. Juzo, uh, Juzo, there we Juzo. go. Juzo. I thought it was a she. I did too, because of the way that everything's done. Right. But then, like, they go into it, like, Juzo, all those stitches on Juzo, he did yes. them, him, he did all that himself. Right. It was self inflicted. Because he was uh, basically kidnapped by so many ghouls. He was kidnapped by the ghouls, and the, the gourmet actually had him at one point. Yeah. They they used him as a butcher to kill their food. Yeah. And then he like fillet it and just pass it out to everybody, and people would be like, yum. But then the uh-huh. CCG was like, boom, what's up? I'm at your front door. And they're like, no, you're coming with us. Yeah. Because you're human. But that drove her insane. Oh, yeah, or him. It drove him insane. I think what drove him insane in the end was when he saw his two friends. And they turned out to be ghouls, like half ghoul as well. And he tried to kill them both. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's really kind of what pushed him into being so not broken Mm -hmm. but unstable right but he was like the the comedic he was the comedy relief he was the comedy relief they definitely needed some comedy relief in this show oh god they did (laughs) there was so much murder (laughs) um uh, the last two minutes of the show there was kind of like a comedy relief too do you remember those I feel like the last two minutes of the show was uh, the last two minutes was when uh, Kaneki was carrying Hide to the CCG no I'm not not talking about the the last like two minutes I'm talking about every single episode there's like there was always something that gave you a little chuckle like a little chuckle like in the last episode Hide couldn't make coffee correctly and he's like screw it yeah um, Katoro Amon. Kotaro? Kotaro. Point him out because I forget faces. Kotaro. That guy, one of the doves, the yes. dude that Kaneki pummels the crap out of. Mm-hmm. What about him? What do you think? Hard ass. Definite. Yeah. Um, he and Karo Mado. <laughs> there's, there's, so many, there's so many jokes about that guy uh-huh. the scene where he chases Jason right you saw, you probably saw that in the uh, Tokyo Ghoul and Crack YouTube video yes and it says when uh, when you de- uh, redecorate your room and he goes he's like running around smashing things Jason Jason and then yeah. it goes I'm so happy ha ha yeah <laughs> and like I mean, it's not wrong because he is smiling Right, right. Um, let me put my... Okay. Um, uh, I can't even pronounce his name now. Kotaro. 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 Um, and is like the apprentice to... Kurio? 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 The guy. Mato. Psycho, Mato. Psycho old dude. That's psycho not the old dude that has um, a lot of these weapons that were taken from Kanuge. The, um, I'm trying to remember what they're called. Well, they're in Kinkyu, suitcases. The Kinkyu. The Kinkyu. Uh, as weapons. Against, you know, the... The ghouls. The ghouls. The evil ghouls. And they're not evil. And this they're guy They're just is, misunderstood. Yes, they're just misunderstood. I'd give one a hug. You'd give one a hug, honestly? It just depends on who I'm hugging. That's, that, that's the main part. Would you hug Rizzi? Hell no. <laughs> Wait, are we talking in public? Or... Because that's a different story. Because she won't try to kill me in public. No. She wouldn't. What about Nico? Would you hug Nico? Mm, Which one is that one? (laughs) That dude... I'm not sure, but we have blood and gore going on in the background, so it's kind of distracting. <laughs> Are you watching this? Is that blood and gore? Are you watching it? No. It sounds like you're watching it. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, the squishy is the, uh, the them eating all the organs. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, it's a it's a blood and gore thing. Oh my gosh! It's a very it's very bloody. my Snapchat is getting blown up from this whole conversation. Look at that! Right on, man. Everything is getting blown up about this. This is great. Um, a, and then we got Akira, which is the daughter of the the psycho. Um, a detective of the CCG. Oh, then, her? Yeah. She, like, tries to make out with Kokoro at one point. Yeah. She, like, gets really sick and she's all like, oh, I'm gonna kiss you. And he's like, no. You're crazy. Um, there was a point where she got so drunk that uh, he had to uh, take her home. And, and he did like 7,000 like push-ups on her porch. <laughs> he went out to her balcony and just did like 7,000 push-ups while she was sleeping. Yeah, he was so embarrassed that he got a heart on watching her sleep that he went over to the outside balcony and did like 7,000 push up, push-ups. 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 <laughs> um, but... Uh, uh, the second, you know, second season, it was like uh, the battle between CCG. The second and season is where tension ghouls. and crap got real. Yes, it did. Um, and then, do you think Kaneki is still alive? I would assume that they have him like locked up at some point. Because or uh, that he like willingly end. surrendered himself. Or well, uh, Kaneki, or what had Hyde's body. Or Hide's body, um, and Hide uh, was apparently in. A, I don't know if it was an accident or a ghoul bit him or what. What happened? But he was at Antaku. Keep at in the, mind there. The cafe. So, there was a lot of ghouls. Oh, uh, we got a we got a message in from Caitlin. She says, "I don't think Hide is dead." I mean, not Hide. Uh, Kaneki. Kaneki. Yeah. She says she doesn't think so. So like, uh, okay. Okay. Thanks. I don't think so either. Um but uh but Hide. Do you think Hide's dead? Mm. He lost a lot of blood. He did lose a lot of blood and I don't think coffee helps that much. No. I think he's dead. He might be a ghoul. It's not like a zombie. <laughs> 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 um, but I mean, they had to do an organ transplant for Kaneke. Kaneke Kaneke was uh, thought to be dead too, but you know, the organ transplant saved his life. What about Hide? Might as well. I don't know why the life. CCG would create a ghoul. Why would the hospital create a ghoul? Because the hospital was run by ghouls. Oh. Oh, I didn't get that from the show. Riza even says it when she's talking to Kaneki in his head at the end of season one. She's like, yeah, all it took was a few strings and boom, you are a ghoul. They willingly Ooh. and knowingly put ghoul parts inside of Kaneki. How have they not been caught yet? Who suspects the hospital? Um, the CCG. Clearly they didn't. They didn't know, but uh, eventually, uh, word would find out that they're creating ghouls, and you know somebody would lose his license or something. More like his life since. What? Uh, <laughs> bum. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I had to do that one. Yeah, that, that was too good of an opportunity to pass up. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so can we get some music going on in the background? Oh, this is him sniffing the towel in the bathroom. Smelling the towel, sniffing the towel in the bathroom. <laughs> Moist towelettes. Moist towelettes. That is the gourmet. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. I love it. If you watch Should it, it's even it up worse. Really? Yes. What do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? Should I surprise you guys? <laughs> you name it, brothers. <laughs> Caitlin also says, that sounds like Dr. Stein from Soul Eater. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you would. That's the next one I recommend. Okay. Uh, it's. I'll explain that one after everything, because we have a good show, and I don't want to ruin it with Soul Eater. 
Okay. <laughs> not saying not saying Solita's bad, just we got too much goods. Okay, Renji Yomo. Uh point. Point? Point. Point. Which one? The one with the gray hair. The guy that collects the dead bodies. The the guy that collects the dead but yeah, well he's oh, he's got he's tall he's got a trench coat always on great trench coat because he never feels and pain because he got stabbed like a trillion times in that right, one episode right yeah I I felt bad for him at one point I was like dude you got to put up with all of this BS holy hell I would have just killed him all by now okay now my favorite character um I wish they had more character development with that character him yeah the the Kazuki Banjo. Mm, point I wasn't looking I'm responding to fans right now is that the dude that tried to save Kaneki I can't see his face from here uh the path pacifist yeah that guy yeah see they they hinted at a lot of things for the other ghouls in the Aogiri tree but they really didn't go into depth about them no they did not and I, I honestly wanted to uh to find out more about him I guess I'll just read the manga um. So, um, <laughs> I can't what? say what she said because there's explicit content. No, okay. we can't have this. We can't have this. We had one get taken oh down for God. this one. Did we really? <laughs> yeah, we couldn't upload. Remember oh, for the man, Pokemon you knew Go that episode? Instantly. You knew what that you instantly when we uh, did the Pokemon Go episode. You were like, we can't. We can't upload this because no, we could upload it, but something was copyrighted on it. Right, I, I it was the Pokemon it. Go I theme. Took it out. Right, but he just tried to play it in the background. I was like, no, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. It's okay. Background music is fine. I would. Uh, I, I don't think we should take that risk. Copyright. Uh, it. They don't. Take, what in the world? <laughs> Can you name it? No. Uh, no, I can't. I got a weird dance that I do at work when we're done for the day. Okay. I shovel, like I act like I'm scooping dirt to the right, and then I go to the left, and then I just dance in planes. <laughs> it's it really weird. Yeah, I have no idea what that song is. I don't either. Space Jam. Ah. Uh, oh yeah, Space Jam. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember watching that. I remember watching the hell out of that. I think they're making a second one. No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. I am pretty certain. I'm denying. Okay, you do that. I, I'm, I'm in denial right now. Yes, I'm in a rig- river in Egypt. Um, I have a friend that said she wanted to go to Egypt just so she could stand in the r- denial and say that. <laughs> oh God. I have a friend that wants to go, uh, that wanted to go to Memphis, Tennessee, and basically walk on the sh- next to the street of Tennessee while on video while singing I'm walking in Memphis alright then I don't know that song you never heard of that song? I spend my time playing video games watching anime and sleeping or eating and working okay um any other characters that are your favorite? I want to know about what your favorite character is. My personal favorite, I had to say, other than the mask guy, I thought... The mask guy? The dude that made the masks. Oh, Uda. Yeah. And of course, everyone loves the main character, so... Kind of can't, can't count him. Um, I kind of wanted to hear more about Toka's brother, like the backstory behind what really made him who he was. Mm Mm-hmm. I know they revealed in season two that his dad died and was like being used as some his his cognate was being made as an armor for uh, the CCG and Mm -hmm. there was just so much behind that Mm -hmm. and I wanted to go back into that some more but they really couldn't do that because I don't know right jabbing out over here I have a I just always wanted to know what was the point between well, but the contention between Shido oh, and Akira. Oh, feared the T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> the, sh- the Shido, Shido ta- Tazi, Tazi, Just stop saying this. I'll just point, point them out. There I'll you go. Mama. The, the, these two characters. They were rivals in school. Oh, yeah, they were rivals in school, yeah. 
Um, and then it, this lady right over here, <laughs> Ituri. The same person, uh, Caitlin keeps messaging in. She goes, really, Star Wars? Well, there's your theme song. <laughs> and what is up with this one, Naki? Uh, Naki? 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 What is, uh, Didn't that guy die? What's your friend's, uh, what's your request? Does she have a request? Unless you guys have something close. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Let's see, does she have a request? Yeah. You, you got a song request? Because we'll play it after break and set. No, we have time. Yeah. You got a request? Come on. Right now there's nothing, so. And poor Hinami. That that little girl. Um, yeah, dude. Saw her mom get murdered right in front yes. of her. Mm. She says hi. I guess that's her request. Hi. Um, we mean a music request, child. We want a music request. Yeah, we'll, we'll play background music requests. Hi. Hello. Hello. Did she say H I or H I G H? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that one. Sorry. <laughs> uh, she says hi as an H I. Okay. Okay. So the next season of Tokyo Ghoul is supposed to come out in. I think it's December of this year. December. December. I love the coverage it of the theme October. song of season one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just glorious. I think in October we're going to have to do a Walking Dead. Yeah, we're going to have to do that one. Um, and then October, uh, I'm thinking about trying to see if we can invite some um, scary authors or scary um, celebrities on the show. How about let's let's invite Cassandra Peterson? What do you think? Yeah, go for it. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Do you know who I'm talking about now? Let's invite the dude that killed uh, Liam Neeson in Star Wars. <laughs> He's the only actor to ever kill Liam Neeson in a movie. Liam Neeson was in Star Wars? Qui-Gon Jinn? In the prequels? Oh. Like it was the very first one. Are you talking about... Um, the Phantom Menace? The Phantom Menace, yeah. The, the dude the, that played Darth Maul? Darth Maul. He's the only guy to ever kill the, Liam Neeson in any of his movies. Hmm. Okay. I was uh, I was uh, mixing up uh, Liam Neeson with Sean Bean. <laughs> Sean Bean <laughs> dies in every almost every movie. <laughs> That's a lot of people to invite. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was thinking either... Um, there was... Uh, Who's that guy's name that uh, said he would invite uh, Bruce Campbell? Nick. <laughs> How is um, he? <laughs> Darren Yates. Hi. 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 Do you remember the guy that uh, came in and said that he would invite uh, um, Bruce Campbell? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. I can't recall. I can't I quite can't. recall. No. Okay. Never mind. Who said that? I can't remember. It wasn't me. Poop. Eh. Oh well. Okay. Um. If there's no break requests, uh, we're there's, gonna there's go. No break requests. There's no break requests. So let's uh, go ahead and go to break. Um. And once we come back, we'll talk about Ruby. There will be no requests for background music during that, because we have some really good stuff. Yes.
Greenville Pawn and Collectibles is locally owned and operated. They are a trading post of all things. If it's legal, they will buy it, sell it, or trade for it. Liz is one of the friendliest owners you will ever meet. Stop by anytime, Monday through Friday, 9 to 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 to 5 p.m. Maryville Pawn and Collectibles is located on 159, just south of the intersection of 159 and 162 in Maryville, Illinois. The address, 2929A North Center Street. Give them a call, 618-288-7870 or email at maryvillepawn at aol.com. You can also find them on Facebook, Maryville Pawn and Collectibles. And when you go there, tell Liz Riot Radio says hello. Raise your hand. Who's tired of the same 20 songs a day on other stations? Five to ten minutes of commercial breaks, sports shows all sounding the same, and DJs that sound like robots? Yeah, it sucks. Well, here's something different. We care about the listener. Right. Freaking. Radio. Oh yeah. Yeah. Guess what? What? You know what my favorite gem is? Gem? Like my favorite like gemstone. Oh, I thought you were talking about like gem and the holograms. Yeah, right. <laughs> D- just guess. Perido. No, it's a ruby. <laughs> 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 yeah. Ruby. <laughs> that was a great pun. <laughs> um so Ruby uh the quadra quartet, the quartet of murderous girls. I wouldn't say they're murderous girls. What's with the Star Wars? We clearly have Ruby soundtrack. Or we or we have Ruby. <laughs> you guys are good. You guys recognize stuff instantly. Yes. And I get yelled at. I didn't <gasps> yell, because if I had yelled, yeah. I would have moved away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I love these songs, man. Yes. Every one of their songs is an original, too. Yes. So, the way Ruby is... The way the name Ruby came about... Ruby... Okay, so... Ruby is based was created by Monty Oum. Yes. Rest in peace. Yes. Uh, Monty Oum, he, he said the joke behind why he called it Ruby uh-huh. because the day he came up with the idea. Uh-huh. So he dyes his hair a lot or he'll wear like a wig. And uh-huh. so at the time, he said he was wearing black pants with a red shirt uh-huh. and a white fleece shirt with it. Uh-huh. And so the interview, like they were interviewing him on their main channel and they're like so what made you come up with the colors for Ruby and he goes oh red and he pulls on his shirt white and he pulls on his other shirt black and he points at his pants and he goes yellow because I'm Asian (laughs) 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 and then like he's just he's just a great guy Um, yeah he was an awesome dude I met him once really yes and it was just before I left for basic too uh huh so um I went and I think I met him at PAX East. Uh huh. And he was just a great dude to be around. Like, he had this vibe that was just so awesome. And man, could he dance. He actually, uh, he made one video. I think it was called Haloid. That was uh-huh. his first video. And it was Samus versus Master Chief. Uh-huh. And he was a high school dropout, and he was self-taught in animation, mm-hmm. dancing, and martial arts choreography. Nice. And so, uh, after creating Haloid at like 17, mm-hmm. Rooster Teeth, the company that he ended up being hired by, wow. were like, hey, we'll hire you. And mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, let's do it. And thus, Red vs. Blue was born, but that's a different story. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a way horribly funny story, though. Okay. So... And there really wasn't, like, I don't know the whole inspiration behind Ruby, but it's it's a really great show to watch. Okay. Well, there are a quartet of four girls, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. So Ruby technically is an acronym, R-W-B-Y, but they pronounce it Ruby. Um, so they're in... Uh, a place called Revenant or Revenant? The world is called, the place itself is called, um, 
place he's called, the place that, that like they live in the planet is called Remnant. Right. So, uh, Darren, is there any way we can play the backstory to Ruby? I'm I don't. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Yeah. Um. It tells the legend of like his story of how man was born, and so what's do you know the name of the special weapon that they use? The, the special weapon? Yes, like the special powers in their weapons. I thought that was like their aura or something. Dust. Dust. Oh, yeah, they were in the forest collecting dust. Yeah. Um, from trees? No. From the ground? No. From the sky? That's no. So, the way it goes is man was born from dust. And so, here, just look up uh, episode one of Ruby, please, season one. And so, at the very beginning... It's RWBY, season one. Episode one. Got it. Here, turn down the music, please, so people can hear this, because it's actually really yeah. important to the story. So, this I see, RWBY, season one, volume one and two, chapter one. Yes. We're only going to play the first few minutes. You want uh, chapter one? Yes, please. It's all right. Let me get through the ad. Everybody so loves annoying. ads. So annoying. Hold on one second. Let me see. There we go. Mankind has grown quite fond of recounting the exploits of heroes and villains, forgetting so easily that we are remnants byproducts of a forgotten past. Man, born from dust, was strong, wise, and resourceful. But he was born into an unforgiving world. An inevitable darkness, creatures of destruction, the creatures of Grim, Grim? set their sights on man and all of his creations. These forces clashed, and it seemed the darkness was intent on returning man's brief existence to the void. However, even the smallest spark of hope is enough to ignite change. And in time, man's passion, resourcefulness, and ingenuity led them to the tools that would help even the odds. This power was appropriately named... Dust. 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 Nature's wrath in hand, man lit their way through the darkness. And in the shadow's absence came strength, civilization, and most importantly, life. But even the most brilliant lights eventually flicker and die. And when they are gone, darkness will return. Thank you. That's All awesome. Right. So that was his story of how man was born. So you may prepare your guardians. It, it keeps going, it's but it's actually like... So the way dust works is there's elements of dust. So red dust is fire, white dust is ice, yellow dust is electricity. Oh, so it's kind of like um, uh, materia from Final Fantasy. Right. Okay. And so he uses this, like people have dust and weapons. Uh huh. So Ruby, no, Weiss, her rapier has all six types of dust in it. So depending on what dust she puts in the dial. Uh-huh. Depends on what effect her sword has. Right. Now, everyone's weapon variant is different. Every, every everyone is unique. Mm-hmm. So Ruby has a sniper rifle that doubles as a scythe. Weiss has her rapier. Blake has a handgun that is also like some sort of grappling hook weapon. Mm-hmm. And then Yang has her shotgun gauntlets. So each person uses a different type of dust. Right. And but they also have something called a semblance. Now, I got you to watch this. I think you finished all three volumes. What did you think? Um, what I thought, um, the first uh, volume was kind of like a, uh, just like a, a quick introduction because uh, it, each episode had like six minutes. Um, some episodes were like four minutes. Uh, some were. You got lucky longer. if an episode was ten. You got lucky. A lucky you got lucky if it was ten. ten minutes. So it was like I I saw the whole entire season in one in like an hour. In like an hour. Um, it wasn't that bad. It's on Netflix. 
It's also on Kiss Anime. And Crunchyroll. I don't like Crunchyroll. I, I mostly watch uh, Kiss Anime. Um, I liked it. Um, I like the animation. I, I it reminded me of uh, me watching not just an anime, it, uh, like a video game being played. Yeah. Um, I uh, I like the uh, the characters. Um, it kind of reminded me of Harry Potter in a way. We got a question. Which weapon would you choose if you were in the world of Ruby? What weapon would I choose? Yes. Oh, good lord. I'm going to have to think about that for one for a while. Um, what, what would you choose? I like Crow's sword. Ruby has an uncle named Crow that taught her how to use the scythe. And it also doubles as a sword. But I think I would just prefer it in its sword form. I would prefer Penny's weapon. Penny is very Penny unique. Penny is a very amazing. unique character. Very unique character. She's kind of like a... Uh, well, she's a robot. She's the first but, robot to generate an aura. Uh, and also, she has artificial intelligence. Yes. That's what, um, that's what allows her to generate her aura. Right. Um... So, her weapon is uh, a series of swords. Mm-hmm. That she controls that with, she like, controls. unseen strings. Mm-hmm. But she's also a robot, so it makes it easier. Mm-hmm. So, that, that I would use that. No, I know what weapon I would use. What? Remember in Season 3, Violet, the bunny? The yeah. Bu- mm-hmm. I would use that. Because she... So, her semblance is she can mimic anybody. And so she mimics people's fighting styles in her... She has a little box that she carries, and it creates uh, hard light versions of the weapon. So, like, a physical version of the weapon made out of a hologram. Nice. And she just went to town on a couple of robots in the last few episodes. There's also um, a character uh, in the third season when they're doing their fights. Um... He's kind of like a, a I don't know uh, he's I don't know if he's African American or Caribbean or whatnot but uh, he has a trumpet as a weapon and he that morphs guy. into multiple different versions of he's himself. like a Pokemon that knows double team yes there's just multiple of them and his trumpet uh, sends out wave shocks that's cool I like that one yeah um. But uh, first season, it just uh, establishes the characters. Uh, Ruby is 15 years old. Um, for some re- unknown reason, she gets an invite to go to the school where she learns how to be a huntress. And she meets up with uh, Weiss, who after, can't stance her. After blowing up uh, on the side of a cliff. Mm-hmm. By sneezing. Uh-huh. And uh, there's Blake. Who is there during that Yang. altercation of sneezing. And Yang is Ruby's sister. Yep. And Bl- Yang has a nice rack. <laughs> Yo, boy, <laughs> I, I, I was, boinsy, I was boinsy, boinsy, boinsy. hoping you would say that too. I was like, yes. Yeah, she's top heavy. <laughs> she's top heavy. That's what uh, she I think she prefers she her fists. In the third season, she's kind of top heavy. Dude, she's top heavy the whole series. Oh my god. I have no idea. I mean, what kind of bra does she wear? That would have been a question for Monty. Yeah. Um. Uh. Someone, I think, made like a personal spin off of Ruby. Mm-hmm. I think they called it Neon, but it was like N Y O N. Um, and then in the first season, you have all the teams that are starting to compile. Um, we have Ruby, and Ruby is the, the, the leader of the Ruby team, RWBY. And then you have the Juniper team, which is Jean, Jean uh, which is basically just a male version of Joan of Arc. I mean, come on. Jean Arc, literally. Jean Arc, literally. Yeah. And then uh, Juniper is Nora. Okay. Per. I. Pira. Run. Pira. Okay, Run. so I yep, love... Go. There's a story that I have about uh, Nora. Uh-huh. So, I recommended Ruby to a friend, and 
every time she saw me after she started watching Ruby, she'd always go, brah, brah, and I'd have to <laughs> respond with, I don't think that's what a sloth sounds like. <laughs> and then she'd run up to me and she'd boot me on the nose and run away. And then there's Sifi, Sifi, uh, Coco, Fox, Velvet, okay. and Yatushashi. Okay, so Velvet. Velvet? Here's a story about Velvet. What? She was a fan-submitted character. She reminded me of Final Fantasy. Well, okay, so there's these things in there called... Um, Bunnies. No. It's Rabbits. The, no, the half, like the animal people. The uh, faunus. Faunus, yes. So the faunus have animalistic traits to their humanoid bodies. So Blake from Ruby, part- she is a faunus. She's part cat. <gasps> and she has little bunny ears under her... I mean, not bunny ears. Little kit, kitty ears under her bow. And so there's uh-huh. a scene in season two... Right. ...where Blake disappears and because Weiss gets mad at her and then Ruby finds Blake and Weiss finds Ruby after they get into a giant fight. And Ruby's like, please don't get mad at her. She's actually a faunus that's trying to help us, not the White Fang. And she has really... Uh, she has kitty ears under the bow and it's actually quite cute. Yeah. And then Velvet is uh, a bunny. Uh-huh. And she's pretty cool. So she's that... She's the mimic... Of the whole thing, mm-hmm. she can do anything. Yeah, and then you got Cyrodiil, which is Cardin, Russell, Dove, and Sky. Uh, who's the second dude on Velvet's team, right next to Coco? Right next to Coco? Uh, Fox. Fox. He's blind. Yeah. His semblance is he can see people's aura, so mm-hmm. he he gets to see people at what as what they really look like. And then we got Beacon Academy staff. Um, okay, I, so keep in mind a lot of this, like a lot of the people, are inspired by other things. Right. So Professor Ozpin, the Wizard of Oz. Right. Uh, Professor Goodwitch, Glenda Goodwitch from the Wizard of Oz. From the Wizard of Oz. I love that corgi. They have a little ass kicking corgi. Yes. Um, so in the second season, um, was it second or third? Second. I don't know. It was second. second. Um, they in the in the middle of it, they get a gift, and it was a little Welsh so, corgi. <laughs> yeah, they get it from Ruby's and dad. Ruby's dad, and they they're like, "Well, how does he? How are we going to feed him?" No, and it's they find a little tube, and it's like, "What's this?" And then they open it up, and it turns out that it's their dog. Right. They somehow fit. Uh, they somehow fit he somehow fit this corgi into a tube that was maybe three inches wide right. and they're like I wonder how they're going to f- like, they're feed like, him how are we going to feed him if we don't have any food and then they turn the can over, over and, and just a, so boom mountain of food, food at least up to Yang's like what upper thigh and a can opener and a can opener but here's and, the and thing, then a little note a, the, the corgi is so intelligent that he can use the can opener to feed himself yeah that's what's so great that corgi is like legendary I see more things about that corgi and Nora uh-huh. than I do about any other character in the show well does he replicate what Nora is doing the corgi yes no people just love him no no uh, like uh, when Nora li- lies to the ground the corgi lies to the ground no no he, he, he doesn't replicate imitating everything he doesn't yes he does that's, no, that's not what I'm saying though people love the corgi just cause it's a corgi I know and then people love Nora because Nora's a psycho. Dude, her hammer is a grenade launcher. Oh, I'm not talking about Nora. I'm, I'm talking about Yang. That's He's like imitates an, every, anything that Yang does. It's because Yang was born before Ruby and stuff, so. No, I'm talking about the Corgi. That's what I'm saying. So they got the Corgi when Yang was a, a baby. And so the Corgi grew up with Yang. Then Yang's mom disappeared. And then oh. her dad married Ruby's mom. They had Ruby, okay. and then her, Ruby's mom died. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> My friend is watching it on YouTube, and she's like, this is the best show ever. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really good. And it's all original. Okay. Now, I got to talk about mm-hmm. John. John? And during uh, their little dance, there's soiree, the prom. 
he made a bet and he betted that he would wear a white dress to prom. No, the the bet was if Pira did not get a date to prom, he would wear a dress. And she didn't get a date to prom. And so they ended up having like he ended up changing into a dress in the middle of prom coming back and then they had like this hardcore dance session and it was awesome yes it was it was pretty cool now uh, the villains see the best thing about this is that the villains blend in with the actual students I know oh okay I gotta tell you this sure the dude's son he's part monkey he is probably like his voice actor uh-huh. is actually an American anime voice actor. Right. His name is Michael Jones. Right. And he's also one of the Let's Players for Rooster Teeth. <laughs> yeah, um, a and, lot of them are uh, American voice actors. No, that, that's not what I'm saying though. Is he's like well known in the anime world, and so yeah. when people heard that he was going to be doing something with Ruby, yeah, people just lost their crap. Ah. Uh. And then uh, he's also really well known for his rage quits on YouTube. Uh-huh. Do not watch those if you're under 18. Right. Because there's a lot of swearing. Neptune is also a really interesting character. Yeah, his name is Neptune. The god. He's named after the god of water. What's his biggest fear? Water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Um, but um, he's kind of like a, a ladies' man. Yeah, that's what sucks about him, though, is because he, he acts like he's a ladies' man, and yet he's really kind of a little chicken chicken butt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my favorite scene was when uh, they climbed up to Ruby's room, Team Ruby's room. Right. And Sun's, like, hanging from the tree, and Neptune's like, yeah, can I come inside? This is yeah. not safe for me. Yeah. Um, or when they fought the robot on the highway. Uh, I I was uh, thinking more about uh, whenever they were fighting the all girl team, and he was going to the girls. You know, just remember, I is up here, not <laughs> down here. <laughs> right. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, Rooster Teeth uses Ruby in a lot in a few of their weekly updates, and so they'll animate their themselves. And uh, Yang is always like, yo, guys, eyes off my gauntlets. <laughs> Even though everyone's looking at her boobs. Yeah. Poor Yang. Boobies. Oh, God. Um, okay. Favorite character. Psst. Favorite character. Yeah. Yeah, who's your favorite character? Who's my favorite character? That, yeah, that was a question. Oh, that was a question to me. Okay, um, well, I'm trying to, uh, uh, to get out of this stupid, um, um, beach ball of death on my Mac. Beach ball of death. Beach ball of death. People, if, oh, so the voice actor of Cortana is in Ruby, and she is the main villain. Ooh, are you talking about uh, Salem? Uh, that lady at the end of season three. Yes. Yes, her. Ooh, that is the voice actor for Cortana. I think it's Jen Taylor is her name. Hmm. And she is also the narrator at the very beginning of season one. And she also plays Princess Peach for Mario. Ooh. Um. Kind of think of a of a, my favorite character of all at this point. Um, I would have to choose. Um, I like. I wouldn't say Neptune because Neptune is real is a a douchebag. But um, I would have to say. I I can't say Ruby because she's like the main character. Well. I like um, everyone loves Ruby because she's the she. Okay, so everyone else has been like, yeah, I've seen some crap type of person, except Ruby. Ruby is the innocence of this show. She is adorable. Right. So, did you know that the voice actor Michael Jones, right? Mm-hmm. His wife is actually the voice actor for Ruby. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> and so, it's really funny because. 
um, like they go behind the scenes sometimes and he goes yeah it's really hard not to make jokes about this considering that they play two different characters even though they're married in real life and then there's just all these weird jokes between them and it's hard for him not to reference these jokes out of context I would say Sun is my fa- my most favorite character. Sun's a good character. I like Sun's Sun. Sun's a really good character. Um, I would also say Penny. Penny's though, a good one. Even though she, you know, I don't say she died. But I'd she, say she was disassembled. She, I think I think that's a good. They term. disassembled Johnny Five. What? What? You, what? you haven't seen Short Short Circuit? I'm busy watching Ruby. Um, we need to get <laughs> into some really good culture, 80s pop culture. You think so? Darren, yes. Let's do it. Because he has not seen the two short circuit films. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Disassembling Johnny Five. Johnny Five still alive. <laughs> and you got Ali McSheely uh, playing the... Uh, and Steve Gutenberg. You know what the one thing I really, really love about Ruby? It's red. The soundtrack. Yes. Um. <laughs> I've also um seen uh, a lot of. You were talking about um similarities between uh, some of these characters and popular films. Yeah. Um. I'm, if I can get out of this stupid freeze on this computer. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Come on, Safari. It's, it's work a term with me. I haven't heard in forever. Anyways, uh, um, that's another '80s song. So you know a little bit of '80s pop culture. Zway, that's the uh, the um, the dog. The Wolf. Zway. Zway. Two. This his name is Two. Because it's German for two. Huh? Zway. Zway is German for two. Zway, for the name of the dog, is spelled the same way as Zway. So interesting. In German, his name is Two. I can get my Mac to work. Come on. Um. They actually made a little spinoff of Ruby called Ruby Chibi. Yes, uh, I was gonna watch that after I saw um uh, the last se- uh, the last episode uh, last night, but it was like one o'clock in the morning, so I didn't want to. Wow, proceed. you stayed up till one o'clock in the morning to do that. Yes, I, I stayed up until 1 o'clock in the morning watching Rupee. Did um, you have to work today? No. Oh, that's right. You get Fridays off now. Yeah, I get Thursday and Fridays off. Lucky you. Okay, so um, there's uh, Cinder and in, in the in the Cinder faction. There's Cinder, Roman. Roman Torchwick. Roman Torchwick is basically the um, uh, spinoff from uh, Clockwork Orange. Stanley Kubrick's. Kubrick. That guy's a... He's a really weird director. Yeah, he did The Shining, and he did... Um, he's done a lot of stuff. He's done a lot of films. Um, and then we got Emerald, and then Mercury, and then Neapolitan. I like Neo. Is, Neapolitan is like the Neapolitan ice cream. And they call her that because one eye is pink and the other is brown, and then her right. hair is the same way. Right, but there's... You know, her skin is white, too. Pale. Like pale. Pale white. Yeah. She's, I, she's I love her semblance. Yeah. She can turn any illusion into almost a reality of sorts. Yeah. Um, Yang's mom has a great semblance. Do you know why Yang's mom has no scars? No. Because her semblance is a subconscious semblance where if she even feels a little bit threatened, mm-hmm. any move you make against her will be reflected back on you. Nice. So, like, let's say I tried to hit you with a sword, and it cuts you. Well, the only thing that takes damage is your clothes. Uh-huh. I would get the cut. Nice. So, I would be bleeding, and you wouldn't. And that's why she has no scars. Okay. Yang's is similar, but she absorbs the power, but she has to be conscious for it. Okay. So the first season was just uh, again uh, back a develop a development season. Uh, they get into their schools and uh, they form their teams and they go on their first quest. What did you think about episode one of season two? Um, the giant food fight. The giant food fight where Juniper and Ruby got into a food fight while Neptune and Sun watched. I I don't know. I, I think I got I kind of got bored after a while of season two. 
No, the f- that that food fight. Well, I think Yang started that one. Yeah, she did. What was the punchy she started with? Oh, uh, we're going to Turkeys. start. No, we're going to start the semester with a bang, and then mm-hmm. Yang was like, "I always start my semesters with the Yang." <laughs> hey, WatchMojo.com. But I'm bumped. Um, I am wow. very good. You are. WatchMojo.com, yeah. I have watched enough WatchMojo.com. Like, just... what? No, this happened last week, too. <laughs> you were doing the top five screams from movies or whatever. Right. Because we were talking about Star Trek. God! Right. And it was from WatchMojo.com. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. Um... Uh, the food fight was again it too got long. kind of kind of too long, kind of boring, and then the Glenda came in and fixed everything. So and then Yang fell pointless. through the ceiling. Yeah. Um. And then we got into uh, uh, where? <laughs> huh? I don't know, but I'm just kind of like dancing off at the side over here. <laughs> Uh, where Cinder's faction uh, started merging, and you got more into the storyline. Is this the? Is this? Is who, that Backstreet Boys? That's what I was thinking. This is songs we forgot about by the Backstreet Boys. It's Either a, it's a, it's a, it's a little medley of all. There's like 75 here. Oh, oh, don't! <laughs> uh, no, so, yes, no excessive vulgarity. We'll we'll oh lose our God. monetization. Do we even have any to begin with? We, yeah, we do. I don't have time to watch your videos. I'm busy making my own. You're busy making your own videos. No, I'm busy playing Battlefield. You're 1. busy playing Battlefield. Oh, that 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 that's 92, 98 degrees. Actually, I think they have a game out for yeah. Ruby now. They do. And I saw some gameplay of it, and for just this one company doing it, Mm -hmm. beautiful. I have no idea who that artist is. I I, I want to be bad. Is it Britney Spears? It sure is. Oh, yeah, that Hmm. is Britney Spears. Okay. (laughs) This is... Going through all the the boy and girl music bands. Music is so weird, man. Weird. The music is really weird. I love it though. Um. So third season. Um. I thought third season was really great because you third got to see them Third season was the one all. where like you got emotionally like by this point you're emotionally attached to characters. Right. And you love characters. And then Rooster Teeth was like, you know what? We're going to pull gonna a George pull R. R. Martin here and kill, and off, kill a off a couple people. A couple of characters. And you, like, I cried at the end of season three. I will admit that. I legit broke down and cried. I didn't cry, though. I didn't cry. Um, but it was it was a little sad. Um, and Ruby is now disbanded. Because Weiss has been taken home, Weiss Yang is missing an arm, Blake disappeared, and Ruby has left with Team Juniper. Well, we really know where we know where Blake is at. He's back. At, she's back at the. She's at the still school. on campus. She's still on campus. She's, she's, she's gonna. But she disappeared, and they don't know where she is. Right. I think eventually in um, um, season four they they will find each other. Juniper is now just Juner because they lost Pira. Pira died. Yeah. Poor Pira. Um. Here's a question for you. Sure. What was the first thing Professor Ozpin said to Ruby? First thing that Professor Ozpin said, said to, to Ruby. Ruby. Oh my God! Don't Google it because I want to see if you remember it. I don't. Ruby Rose, you have silver, silver eyes. eyes. Yeah. Do you remember uh, the lore behind that? Um. Crow that, told her this story after the fight with Cinder. She has a genealogy to where um, she has uh, one of the most powerful auras um, that uh, Grimm are very afraid of. And um, basically at the end of season three, she released her silver eyes. It's basically almost similar to um, the Dark Phoenix. Or the Shouting Gun yes. from Naruto. Mm-hmm. Um, so... 
just her eyes are very powerful and they can freeze things and um yeah so yeah that's silver eyes in a nutshell yeah so um what's the one thing that you do not mess with that belongs to yang her boobs her hair oh i i okay because her hair was cut off and she got really pissed off about that crow almost died cutting her hair Mm-hmm. And that's why her hair is longer than everyone else's. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what two lines Pira is famous for? I mean, not Pira. Nora. Nora is famous for. I can't remember. The first one is, I'm going to break all of their legs. And the second one is, I'm queen of the castle. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to break all of your legs. I'm queen of the castle. I'm queen of the castle. I need to watch it over Nora, again. Nora, coming in. I need to watch it again. Um, How about a pretty pony? Um, so... There's a lot of things that, like, were taught, like... Monty Owen's character. So Monty Owen voiced a character in here before he passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, he voiced Lai Ren. And so Monty Owen himself was just a great guy. Um, he, I'm not trying not to get like emotional over here because I admired his work. He was a great dude. Um, mm-hmm. He said at one point, I believe that the human spirit is indomitable. If you endeavor to achieve, it will happen, given enough resolve. It may not be immediate, and often your greater dream is something that you will not achieve within your own lifetime. The effort you put forth to anything transcends yourself, for there's no futility even in death. And so what happened with this was, when he died, there was a lot of theories about what they were going to do to Ren. Mm Mm-hmm. And they were going to be like, well, maybe Ren, you know, died in between seasons. Or maybe Ren's just a mute now. Uh-huh. Well, instead, Monty's brother took over for him. Right. And what Monty did at such a young age is amazing. So for those of you that don't know what happened to him, he was going in for a, a routine medical checkup. Mm-hmm. And he had an allergic reaction to the drugs that they were giving him, and it put him in a coma. And then, after a week, his body just couldn't handle it anymore, and he died. So, at a young age, he died at 33. Mm -hmm. So, he started... um, He did Haloid, I don't remember how long ago. But... He was really young when he started doing animation and dancing and martial arts and everything like that. Right. And so, yeah, that was just really caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he um, he created one of the most epic fights that people had ever really seen mm-hmm. from animation at such an early point when animation was like still a brand new thing. Mm-hmm. And it ended up giving him a career so good that he dropped out of high school to pursue it. Right. Um, oftentimes, when uh, Monty would go to conventions, he would purposely like dye his hair some bright neon color or something mm-hmm. that stood out. Right. And he'd be like, "This is the." He would tweet, "This is what I'm gonna. This is my color hair for the week. You can find me if you see if you see this. It's my head." And so people like personally sought him out and as there was a bunch of cosplayers and everything, people just loved him and he was a great dude. Um, Ruby itself as a show, I don't think could get any better for it being a personally written show. Um, he, he, is this Harry Potter? No, I don't think that's Harry Potter. I don't know. Darren's got this smile on his face. Uh huh. I'm um, right, aren't I? <laughs> He's not in his head. Oh god. I know my music. Okay. Um, but anyways, Ruby as it as itself as a show is just an amazing, amazing show. Because before he passed away, his buddy uh, Carrie and someone else I can't remember. Mm-hmm. 
they got an idea of where they wanted the show to go, and then Monty passed away just before season three was getting started. Right. Season four comes out soon. Right. And I am excited for it because I think Ruby is starting to harness her aura more. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the trailer, she can teleport now. Ooh. And I think he even fly. Well, that's cool. I haven't seen the trailer yet. Uh, you can check out the trailer at roosterteeth.com. Um, and these guys, like, Monty's dying wish was to see Ruby be the big name. Mm -hmm. And now I can go say, hey, guys, did you see the new episode of Ruby? And people are like, oh, yeah, that was great. When it first started up, I'm like, you ever heard of Ruby? And like, what the hell is Ruby? Right. But now Ruby is the thing that's becoming popular. And it's amazing to see it progress because I was there when it started. Like, I wasn't involved in it, but I saw season... I saw episode one the day it came out. Right. I was at that convention. I saw the trailer before everyone else did. And you see the trailer, and you're like, wow, this show looks pretty good. Right. And then season one... I mean, episode one came out, and you're like, all right, that, that was awesome. Mm hmm And then the episodes just kept coming... And I was like, wow, this is a really great show. Mm -hmm. And then season two happened. I couldn't go for that convention, but it was still an amazing show to watch. I uh, was sitting around one day, and I guess I think I was watching Ruby with my sister, actually. Right. Ru she, my little sister, Kira, just loves the show. Mm -hmm. So, like, she's head over heels about the show. Uh, she wanted me to buy her, like, Ruby's scythe off of Amazon. I was like, no, you're, you're too small to have that. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes, see if there's anything new about Ruby. And at this point, I had no idea that they had already announced season four. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, sure, okay, I'll look it up. So I just typed in Ruby, and the first thing that popped up was Ruby season four. And I was like, what's this? So I clicked on it, and it turns out that they had shown the trailer. And... The trailer, it shows a whole bunch of new monsters and that the world is actually starting to fall apart in the show. So, oh, or, chaos yeah. has ensued. Yeah, by the end of season... By the end of season three, three. chaos is, is fully ensued. Right. Um, and it's just a great, a great show. I say that a lot, but it's really true because you won't find a show this well animated by an independent animation team and this isn't some big time Hollywood film right it's these guys are in an office and this was made out of originally spare time because red versus blue it came in between red versus blue actually in between seasons uh 11 and 12 right and so Machi's like, well, I have nothing to work on, so I'll do this. And that's how he got Ruby. And it's just an amazing thing to watch, to see something progress. And the more you look at it, the more you can see, you know, it's not major because people love the art form it is. It's such a, a simple art form, and that's not something you see too often anymore. Right. And so people are like, this is perfect. So, of course, you know, they have to add a little detail here and there every now and then. But... It's because it's so simple, and it's all original. The people that do the music for it are the same people that do music for Red vs. Blue. And it's just this thing that people love to see, and it's, in a way, it's its own perfection. Hmm. I'm looking for the trailer. I'm not seeing it anywhere. Uh, did you look under the videos? Recently added videos. No, not those, because that's going to get you in trouble. What do you mean? This company is also very crazy and inappropriate. <laughs> oh. Um, this is actually their first, like, appropriate show. <laughs> um, like so, are you friendly. talking about this is like a, 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 a Hante company? No. Oh, okay. Like, they make a lot of vulgar videos. Oh. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, but I'm not sure if the actual video has been placed up by them yet. I know there's a bunch of fan recordings of it from when they showed it live. But it's... The world of Remnant is expanding. And that's what I'm excited to see. 
because as far as we know remnants just been so what we've seen of remnant is just inside this one little kingdom inside a school inside of school yeah. and so the falling apart of remnant in season at the end of season three no pun intended is actually opening the world so the world itself has become more accessible you see more of it yes and I can already tell just by watching oh they changed Ruby's outfit and everything mm-hmm. and I have to say she looks badass like the most badass 16 year old 15 year old girl I know and so she looks like their little red riding hood that's where he got his her inspiration for her nice so she was based if you watched the uh, original Ruby trailers Mm -hmm. it goes by each character individually Mm -hmm. and so the first thing we got was Ruby uh Ruby Rose was visiting her mother's grave and it was like a dark night and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so she's walking home mm-hmm. and Ooh, more grim. Yeah, the Beowulfs. And so she's walking home and she gets surrounded by Beowulfs. Mm-hmm. Well, the context, the only words you hear are uh-huh. from the song. And of course, the song in the trailer isn't very a vocal song. It It's only got like four lines. <sighs> She is flying. And she's on a bird, though, so... Oh, okay. She kind of looks like the Red Grim Reaper. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Is that she's such an innocent-looking little girl, and yet she's the most powerful character in the entire series. Right. Everybody's cheering her on. It's because everyone loves it. Yeah, I know. Um, The creatures of Grim are evolving now, Hmm. and so... There's like a gorilla-like Grim, and mm-hmm. then I think there's a hedgehog-looking thing. But basically, thing crap gets real, like really real. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's kicking butt now. So remember, her original semblance <gasps> is super speed. I love her um, new outfit. Her new outfit. It's it's like uh, she's like a goth. Um, they, she's like a goth little red but riding hood. But notice they kept the skirt. They kept that skirt because that skirt and that cape is her signature. Yes, it is. Um, my God. It's beautiful, isn't it? it yeah, looks, it is. It looks great. Um. I can hear the cheering. Yeah. Um. Now she is They're surrounded. doing like a, yeah, she's surrounded. She's got her little shotgun. No, her sniper rifle. That's what it is. Yeah, it is. Where's the other characters? Uh, right now she... Okay, so the, where they are in the story is her, Jean Arc, Lyren, and Nora Valkyrie are heading oh, to... Oh, there's the gorilla. Yeah, there's the gorilla. Okay. They're heading to... Not Vale, because I think they're in Vale. They were in Vale. Uh, I don't remember where they were heading, but they're looking for clues on Cinder, the White Fang... And all the people behind the Grim attack on the uh-huh. school, mm-hmm. because they want to avenge Pyrrha. Because I would avenge Pyrrha. Pyrrha was a great character. Pyrrha was amazing. And so the way they like they want to do this is, they want it to be not a revenge story, but they want to see like why. Mm-hmm. It's a quest to know why. Not they don't really care who because they know who, but they mm-hmm. want to know why. Um, so of course everyone's split up trying to save the the world from all these monsters and stuff mm-hmm. and it's this world that they're living in now is just terrifying the village that she's currently like saving mm-hmm. at one point was considered safe now it's no longer it, it's no longer safe because the grim have gotten in and they want to kill everything and so that's just the way this world is and it's no good. Is she just like dissolving into like a million red petals? I think that's one of her part of her semblance is like she leaves little red petals behind. That that's that's really cool. The hell is that? Oh, <laughs> way, whoa! Darren just like flew back. She she it was like a red tornado. Yes, she's gotten a lot stronger. Oh wow. Oh, what in the world is that? That's her cape. It just grew like 20 miles long. Yes. 
So she she is being she's starting to be able to harness her powers. And so people are like just by listening to the live trailer, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's the perfect thing because this is what people want to see. Mm -hmm. People want to see a little 15-year-old girl kicking ass with a scythe. It's like twice her size. Oh, was that Weiss? Oh, that, that's... That is Blake. Y Blake. Yang. No, I think that's not Yang. That's, that is Yang. That is Yang? Uh, missing an arm. Oh, sh she is missing an arm. Okay, duh. She, got, she cut off her hair? Okay. October 22nd is the official release date for season one. I mean, season four, episode one. <gasps> And it's coming this year. Oh, my God. So, you guys are going to have to prioritize between The Walking Dead and Ruby. The Walking Dead. You need to catch up on that. Yes, I do. Um, I'll, I'll catch up on it. Um, definitely. You need to catch, catch up on Stranger Things. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm only on episode four. And I'm like, I watch like two, two seat. Oh, well, what was it? Two shows. Two shows, shows. Of, two shows two in a shows week. Two shows in a week. <laughs> Well, I mean, it was easy for me because, you know, it's like Ruby was like maybe like an hour for the first season. But Ruby's seasons weren't very long because no. it's an independent artist. It, it is an independent artist. But uh, I think that's something else that's really admired. That um, an independent artist can create a whole entire franchise. By him, like, well, it's not just. By himself. Not, not really by himself. He had a good but, team. Uh, but yeah, with his imagination, he created a whole entire franchise um, just in short bursts. He's like the J.K. Okay. Rowling of Here's a good anime. question. Do you think since the original creator is gone, do you think that it would change the new season? Um, It would change, I, think, I would think, his creative direction. Because... See... But that's what I'm thinking is because before he passed away, or, they had an idea of where they wanted right, to go with this. Right. Because it, Monty was the animator. They had two different story writers. And so they all had to agree on it because it was Monty's project. Right. But they wrote the story. Well, it just really depends on what they had planned. Because um, a lot of uh, creators and artists, they have their own framework before they start uh, creating a show or a book like George R. R. Martin he had the his whole entire his framework said kill everybody oh no but he had it well yeah he, well, <laughs> you um, can't his, argue with that I, I can't argue with that but he had his own entire storyline put Done. together before he started writing that's what most authors do um, so possibly uh, he could have done that too and left his own legacy behind so people can pick up right after where you left off. Right. Um, it might change just a little bit on minor details, but the main plot should be the same. I'm excited. I can't wait. It's September. It really needs to hurry the hell up and be October. I can't wait for October either. Do you know why? No. Fright Fest. It's true. Six Flags Fright Fest. I go there every year. Almost every year. I once... I, like, skipped school for a whole week. Because I would stay up so late going out with friends during Fright Fest. When I had friends, it was. Uh, <laughs> all my <laughs> friends now are on the Xbox. Um, we would go out and we would just stay up so late during Fright Fest. And I, I skipped school for a whole week just to go to Fright Fest every night. We should do that again. We should go. Yeah. I I'll, uh, I'll freaking take work off. I'll, I have a membership at uh, Six Flags. I have to renew mine. I'll, I haven't been there in a year. No, I don't have a season's pass. I have a membership. I have a monthly membership. Okay. So I got parking and I got everything along with that. Oh, okay. So yeah, we'll do it. Well, yeah, I'll do it. It'll be fun. Um, what, what else do you have in uh, mind as far as news? As far as news, uh, it's the weekend, which means the Titanfall 2 pre-alpha tech test is back up. <gasps> oh, yeah. You guys can check us out mm -hmm. there on the Riot Radio Gamers Network. 
You can add me on Xbox Live at Riot Radio Joe. You can follow us on Twitter at JRedWork and uh, Jody White Talks. Um, I want to put in a little bit of news. Uh, Apple is doing its um, its new release possibly next week. Um, so we got uh, possibly the announcement of the new iPhone, um, the new um, possible. Excuse me. Then possibly the new Apple Watch coming down the the, the pipeline, um, uh, or um, possibly other product new products that they're releasing. Once they re- normally announce the new release of their products, they will uh, release uh, the new operating systems too. So that will be awesome. So we got iOS 10 uh, that's coming up and Mac OS Sierra. That will be on the Mac. I don't like Mac. But Mac is good. Mac can't play video games. Mac can play video games. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Nine. Fight. C. Two completely different C languages. Senior. <laughs> nine is also the number nine. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeesh. In the math language. Oh, you never answered our fans' question. What's your favorite weapon? I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I said it was Penny's weapon. If you could use your own weapon. If I can use my own weapon? What would you use? If I can... I don't have a weapon. Good lord, man. <laughs> I, I, I said Penny's weapon. <laughs> did you hear that? I thought I said it could be quiet. <laughs> what would she say? I'm like... <laughs> What? <laughs> what? I'm lost. <laughs> I thought I whispered that really quietly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have really good hearing. You do. Fault. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Did you say a wordy dirt? <laughs> yeah. It's not that. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> He said a wordy dirt. He said a wordy dirt. Actually, it's not that bad of a word. It's not that bad. It's just that it was completely unexpected that I didn't expect to hear it, but I still caught it, and you didn't. Even though you said it quiet enough to where I don't think he could hear you. I I thought I heard heard it. I I did hear it, but I thought, I'm like, what? Did he actually say that? You heard what I said? Yeah, I heard what you said. I'm so sorry, guys. Shite. (laughs) Huh? Shite. No. Huh? Close. He said shaft. Shaft. <laughs> oh. I said, what weapon was you using? I was shaft. Oh, okay. I thought he said shite. No. no. Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> when I edit it in the back, I'm going to try to bump it up. <laughs> to make it louder? Or maybe I should take it out. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I really don't care. That was Can't funny. take me anywhere. Because then I'm just going to sound like a psycho laughing so hard. Oh, good lord. Okay, so you can reach me at on Twitter at, at Jody White Talks. You can uh, log on to the YouTube at Jody White Talks. Um, again, I have a Patreon account. If you guys want to donate money to our Patreon to keep the show alive, it'll be so greatly appreciated. Um, also, did you know that uh, I'm on, um, still on the weight loss thing? Yeah, how was that going? Nice, dude. I lost almost nine pounds. Yes. 8.8 8 pounds. So you're already. doing it. Love it, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, brother. Keep going. Yeah, you're, you're only, what, a week or so in? 10 days? Week and a half. half. Week, and, week half? and a half. Oh, nice. You're yeah. not even halfway done yet. Keep it up, man. Yeah. Well, I'm not halfway done. I'm, I'm pretty close to be... Well, not pretty close to be done, but uh, um, uh, my goal is like 80 pounds to lose. Right. And... Um, you're about, so about 10%, 10% away. 10% Dude, nice, on the way. man. Yeah. Good job, yeah. bro. Seriously. Cool. Well... Christine just texted in. She's She, she was going to call in, but she just want to say you guys... Had a great show tonight. Cool. Thank you, Christine. Thank she you, Christine. Check, but plugs out. don't go in your mouth. No, they don't. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. I tease you about that. No, you guys don't. can check me out on uh, Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Riot Radio Joe. I'm going to be on all weekend playing Titanfall 2 and Battlefield 1 and Overwatch. So hit me up on there and I'll play with you guys. We'll do some Let's Plays. Awesome. Hey, guys, guess what? What? Video game song. Video game song. Yeah. You like that? Yeah.